Nagashwin's Kalki 2898 AD is rich with mythological references, which cleverly link characters from Hindu mythology to a high tech futuristic society, adding depth and intrigue to the storyline. Questions like Is Dulkir Salman an avatar of Lord Parshuram? What is Sumati's connection with the Tree of Life? And how was Supreme Yaskin able to hold the Gandhi Dhanush in his hands? All this and much more will be discussed in this video. Please watch till the end as we have much to unravel and learn. Let's get started. The movie is rich with mythological characters and weapons, including the legendary Vijay Dhanush, once used by Kant, a close friend of Ashwatthama. This bow, crafted by the divine architect Vishwakarma for Lord Shiva, was given to Kant by his teacher Parshuram and used only during the Kurukshetra War. In the film, Ashwatthama keeps the bow, which is powerless, without its last owner, Karna. Later, Bhairava wields the bow's power, proving he is Karna's reincarnation. There's a theory that Dulkir Salman's character, Captain, is a reincarnation of Lord Parshuram. In the movie, Captain mentors Pravasa's character Bhairava, mirroring how Parshuram taught Karna. Parshuram is believed to be one of the Chiranjeevis, also known as the Immortals. Captain, like Parshuram, never ages in the movie, looking the same while Bhairava grows up. In the movie, the complex places a bounty on the captain, who is later captured when Bhairava betrays him. Now, this is my theory. According to Hindu texts, Parshuram is destined to appear at the end of Kalyu to mentor Kalki. Supreme Yaskin, who harbors the demon Kali, knows Captain's true identity and his role in Kalki's arrival. Yaskin might be keeping Captain prisoner to prevent him from helping Kalki or using him as a source of the formula seeded into fertile girls. All this points to one thing. Dulkair will have an extended role in the film's second part and as a fan, I am very excited to see how it unfolds. In Kalki 2898 AD, aside from Ashwatthama, other characters are inspired by Hindu mythology. At the film's end, Bhairava picks up the Vijaya Dhanush, a weapon once used by Kant in the Kurukshetra war. Ashwatthama, recognizing Bhairava as Karna's reincarnation, sees his friend in him. Karna was known for his dedication to equality and welfare for all, asking Lord Krishna to ensure no one faced caste discrimination in his last moments. This aspect likely inspired Nagashwin as Bhairava faces similar discrimination in the film. He and others are barred from entering the complex due to their financial status and perceived unworthiness. In Hindu mythology, Chiranjeevis have inspired countless individuals over centuries by offering wisdom, protection and guidance. Suppose my theory about Dulkir being Lord Parshuram is correct, in that case, the second part will feature two Chiranjeevis, Ashwatthama and Captain, and one of them will impart wisdom and guidance to Bhairava by revealing his past and purpose. This revelation will lead Bhairava to join forces with Ashwatthama to save Sumati. Hats off Nagashwin sir, mind-blowing symbolism. Ashwatthama, the son of Guru Dronacharya, whose story in the Mahabharata is one of courage, loyalty and tragic downfall, was born as an avatar of Lord Shiva, with a divine gem on his forehead that made him almost immortal and invincible. In the movie, Ashwatthama, portrayed by Amitabh Bachchan, is seen offering prayers to Lord Shiva, symbolizing their connection. Renowned for his battle prowess and loyalty to Duryodhan, Ashwatthama played a crucial role in the Kurukshetra war. During the peak of the battle, he sees his father and the Kaurava army defeated. In a desperate act, he uses the Brahmashriyastra to kill Uttara's unborn child, aiming to end the Pandava lineage. Lord Krishna, who drove the chariot of Arjuna in the battle of Kurukshetra, appears in front of Ashwatthama and punishes him for his misdeeds. Now, the movie doesn't show this, but prior to this event, Krishna actually intervenes and saves Uttara's unborn child, ensuring the continuation of the Pandava lineage. And in response to Ashwatthama's heinous act, Krishna curses him, forcing him to surrender the gem on his forehead and condemning him to a life of endless suffering, roaming the forest with unhealable injuries, unable to find death. In the movie, we see the curse part and a description of Ashwatthama's atonement, which becomes the basis of his character in the movie. Krishna tells Ashwatthama that in Kalyu, the demon Kali will be at his peak, powerful enough to stop the birth of Vishnu's 10th avatar, Kalki. Ashwatthama's time of atonement will come when the air becomes toxic, the Ganga river dries up and the divine gem finds its way back to him. This will be the sign that he must protect and guide Kalki. Until then, Ashwatthama is depicted wrapped in bandages, concealing his wounds. When he regains his gem, his injuries heal, further assuring him of his duty to protect Kalki and achieve his atonement. A key symbolism in this narrative is a white horse running behind Krishna when he speaks to Ashwatthama. This white horse is Devdath, who will help Kalki rid the world of his nemesis and usher in the Satyuk. Devdath is a manifestation of Garud Devta. In the movie, when Sumati arrives in Shambhala and is welcomed by its people, statues of Garud Devta atop the corners signify the commencement of Kalki's avatar and his right Devdath. In the movie, Sumati, played by Deepika Padukone and known as Sameti in the complex, is unaware of her destiny and a significant role in the upcoming battle. Despite being declared infertile, she is surprised to find herself pregnant. Initially believing the pregnancy to be a part of an artificial experiment, she grows attached to the baby. 
Following her instinct, Sumati escapes the complex but remains puzzled about why Ashwathama protects her, why Mariam and others in Shambhala are willing to sacrifice for her and why the complex is so desperate to reclaim her. The movie draws parallels with the Kalki Puran where Kalki was born to Vishnu Yashas and Sumati in Shambhala. The film features an inverted tree known as the Ashwata tree. Lord Krishna explains that the tree's inverted nature symbolizes the connection between the gods and the roots of the tree, with Lord Vishnu residing within it. Given that Kalki is the 10th avatar of Lord Vishnu, the film symbolically captures this connection. According to the Kalki Puran, Kalki would be born under this berry tree, further aligning the film's narrative with mythology. In the movie, Supreme Yaskin played by Kamal Hassan has a strong connection to the demon Kali. According to Kalki Puran, Kali and his family were created by Brahma to hasten the dissolution of the cosmos. When they take human form on earth, they corrupt humanity, marking the end of Dwapar Yuga and the start of Kali Yuga. Supreme Yaskin is depicted as a reincarnation of the demon Kali. Yaskin runs a mysterious Project K, seeking a girl who can endure a formula in her womb for 150 days. His goal is to extract a serum, symbolizing his search for the mother who will give birth to Kalki. At the end of the movie, Yaskin administers a serum extracted from Kalki's body into his own, causing his body to heal. This might explain why Yaskin, as a creation of Brahma, can hold the Gandiv Dhanush without harm. Yaskin will be Kalki's arch nemesis in part 2, striving to prevent Sumati from giving birth to Vishnu's 10th avatar. Coming to final thoughts. Nagashwin has masterfully woven ancient mythological references into a futuristic narrative, creating a rich tapestry of characters and events. The story of Kalki 289 AD is a blend of mythology and sci-fi, destiny, and the cyclical nature of time. That's all from us. If you found this exploration insightful and inspiring, please share your thoughts in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out more content from our channel on the next screen. Until then, stay tuned and keep watching.